I uh, took the time, I cut all my pieces, I ground them to fit the pattern. It's really important that when you're grinding uh, that you have just a little bit, you see the black line around each individual piece. Uh, that space is taken up by the copper foil and then a little bit of solder will go in between it, which is good. Uh, if you can't see the black line, it's going to push your pieces out of uh, where they're supposed to be and you won't have really a nice symmetrical piece. It's going to be kind of lopsided. So take the time to make sure you ground everything properly. Um, having used the uh, ruler though, you can see that all my glass pieces are really nice and straight and um, they are fitting together really, you know, quite well. Uh, what I like to do is if I've got two pieces that look really similar, I mark at least one of them. So in this case, I put an L on this one for left and I put an R on this one for right. So I didn't have to uh, try and figure out which one was which. Um, I use the Morton layout block system for this type of a project. Uh, you could just tape your pattern down onto a piece of wood and put wood strips around it. Um, I find that this is a lot more flexible though and all, all your glass uh, uh, tools etc aren't bouncing around on the table when you're hammering the nails in. So these are aluminum strips, they're L brackets with holes in them and these aluminum pins will slip right into the uh, ceiling tile and hold everything nice and firmly. And um, in this case I, I put one long piece here. I decided I wanted this bottom line to be really straight so I put one piece for that one piece for the top and then at the bottom here I just really needed to uh, to go between those three pieces so I just could get away with a small one there. So everything's aligned on my pattern and you have to have to start it together on top of your pattern. I'm always amazed how many people come to their, their first class and they've got all their glass pieces but they thought they were going to put it together without a pattern. Especially something three-dimensional. If you don't have a pattern you're going to be very dissatisfied with the final uh, result. So we have a couple of videos um, already on soldering, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, displaying the so explaining the soldering process. I think you'll find that uh, if you go and watch those, you'll get all the information you need. Um, but very quickly, what I do is I tack solder all the pieces where the pieces join together. So for example here, I've got these three pieces coming together, so I will tack solder there and at the bottom. So what the tack soldering does is it keeps everything from moving around. If I didn't have a particularly good fit, I could at this point push the pieces around a bit. So once you've got the piece tacked together, in this case there's four sides to this lamp. So I will tack all four of them together and take the pieces out and then I'll do my finished soldering um, again all at one time. So this is tacked together so I can just pick it up from one side here. Having um, tacked it well, everything is, is quite firm here so I can move it without having to worry about something pulling out. But it's really important to remember to leave the layout block uh, panels where they are because I want all of my pieces to be exactly the same. If for some reason there's any movement, I'll push everything to the outside because if I have my outside dimensions um, all consistent, uh, whatever irregularities I have in the inside of the panel, will not actually uh, be a problem later on. You may end up with a wider gap than you want, but that's because you have to take more time cutting and grinding, etc. So leave all those on while you tack all four together. So at this point I'll flip it over and I will solder this front and back. So what I can do here is I can flux the front and generally speaking I would recommend that you use 50-50 solder to do your first um, layer of solder and then when you're going to beat it uh, to use 6040 or 6337. Again I have more information on that uh, on our soldering video. I like to use a fume extractor so I'll set that up and you'll be able to see as I'm soldering how the smoke from the flux is being drawn into the, uh, the fume extractor. So if your iron is, a, is the right temperature, you can uh, solder one of these panels together very quickly. And don't worry about going over the edges because later on we're going to just melt those off. Mm -hmm. 
I have the soldering iron right on the copper coil. I'm not worried about cracking the glass. Um, if there's an imperfection in the glass and it's going to crack, whether I have the soldering iron touching it or not, that's not going to be an issue. Um, if it's going to crack, it's going to crack whether you're touching it or not. So again, in our soldering video, we went into a pretty, pretty, uh, uh, quite a bit of detail on the soldering process, so I'm not going to do that now. Uh, one thing I want to point out though is that when you go off the edge like this, you just want to remove it and, um, and flick off that excess because later on when we go to solder these pieces together, it's important um, that the edges are clean. I will do the bottom edge though before I actually go to assemble it. So this is where you can pick up some of those little drops that you pulled off. And I like to go along and tin the front and tin the back. And I would have soldered the back at this point too. I just don't want to take the time in this video to do that. So I've tinned it front and back. I flex it one more time along the edge and I'm gonna need a little more solder for this. So I'll get this set up properly. And now when you're doing the edge, you just go one drip at a time. The reason I did the tacking first of all is because often when you're doing this, the solder doesn't actually make it all the way to the, uh, the far end of the copper foil and you get a little bit of copper showing. So by tinning it first, that's not an issue. And often what happens is I'll put, I'll take one, in one step I'll, I'll put the solder on the edge, then I'll flex it one more time, then I'll go along and just do it one more time and I find that it goes quite a bit smoother if I do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, uh, I'll solder the backside obviously, I'll wash it thoroughly and I'll bring it back and we'll put this lamp together.